Hey, I hope this uh, word finds you well. I'm coming once again from my office to share a word uh, with you. I, I come across a book that was written years ago by author Stephen Covey, uh, and the book was titled Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And, and in the book, Covey coined the phrase, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And, and the message of this book, the message of, of that phrase, to keep the main thing, the main thing, the main thing, that message is timeless. Keeping your focus and efforts on your most important goals will help you accomplish them. And in the Christian context, I, I would say that we must know that the main thing is to keep the main thing or, or central focus, if you will, of our Christian faith, the main thing. And you're probably saying, what are you talking about? Well, well, what is the main thing or the central focus of our Christian faith? The main thing or our central focus is first, our relationship with God. Our relationship with God is the foundation from which we, we build upon. And upon this foundation, our, our relationship with God is built and then we're built into a relationship with other believers and, and then non-believers, if you will. So our mission as believers, uh, with our foundation being of God, is to join effort with other believers to seek and save the lost. Now, we know that we are not the ones that save. But we do play a part. We are very instrumental in, in getting God's message out to other people to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is that Jesus came to die on the cross to set you free from your sin. In the Bible, David, one of uh, an amazing, an amazing man, David was said to be created after God's own heart. Now, we know that David in his history, he, he did a lot of things contrary to what a believer should do. But through the process of his life, he was called a man created after God's own heart. And, and, and I'm going to, to quote a verse from one of his psalms. Um, and I want to quote him when I say that keeping the main thing the main thing is only possible or even comes natural to us when we begin to desire the one thing. I say this all the time in our church. I'm not here to entertain. When I play music or I sing, I'm not here to entertain you. I serve an audience of one, and when I preach, I'm not here to tickle your ears or to entertain you or to make you laugh because I also serve that same audience of one. So we have to desire the one. And David mentions this as the one thing. And it is the state of our heart condition that determines if we will activate in faith and or, or seek after God or keep the main thing, the main thing. In Psalm 27, verse 4, we read, and I quote, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And as I quote that verse, I, I get this sense of fact that David was stating in his own words something that was set to music. The fact that we must seek first God's kingdom. We abide in him, which is making him the central focus or the main things of our life. And also to behold his beauty, which is to say the goodness of God and to inquire of him or to ask him for help. Where we ask him to help us gain his wisdom, his knowledge, and his understanding. And then living such a lifestyle, we become like David in that we are able to have God's supernatural strength to help us overcome afflictions 
day after day. And, and then there is now, it, it, therefore, an outflow of generosity, an outflow of love and the ability to forgive and embrace people regardless of their background or, or what they uh, do to us. And, and we're then able to see things from God's perspective. We're able to see people from God's perspective. Indeed, David was someone whose life it exemplified one who could do all things through God who strengthened him. And you and I, likewise, if, if we have that same conviction as David, through Christ, we are empowered or strengthened to be able to do all things too. That's what Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, right? I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I say this all the time. You cannot give what you do not have. I cannot pour into someone when I have an empty cup. And, and by cup, I'm referring to my life. I was able to just drink a, a, a cool drink of, of water because the water is in the cup, right? Now, how am I going to be able to pour living water from an empty cup? I cannot give what I do not have. And I do believe that you and I are living in the worst of times in, in terms of the works of the powers and uh, of darkness and and my prayer is that you and I stay right in the place pursuing God, and may we pursue God with more zeal than ever before so that we can be transformed and strengthened through his word and in the fellowship, the koinonia, the intimate relationship with the spirit every single day. And let us also keep in mind that it is not only for our sake that we do this, but also for the sake of the living water, the Holy Spirit, to pour out of us into each other. If I haven't spent time with the Holy Spirit, then how can I give the Holy Spirit? If I haven't spent time filling my cup, how can I pour from that cup that has nothing in it? You see, the Holy Spirit within us will overflow into the lives of our families, our friends, our neighborhoods, and even to our nation and to our world. I mentioned that book that Stephen Covey wrote, and, and in that he, he, he talked about these seven things, these seven habits, if you will. And, and the first habit is that you and I take initiative. We see what we want and we take initiative toward it. And then the habit number two is kind of likewise. It, it's in you envision the life that you want. If you're not living the life you want, then pursue that life. Habit number three was to prioritize important over urgent. And then habit number four was to seek mutual benefit. And then habit number five was to listen and understand the other one first. Habit six was to collaborate or, or to create uh, possibilities. And then habit number seven was to practice self-renewal. And as I remember that book, I, I have it in my bookshelf and I got it down and I'm reading these things and, and all of these things sound great. I mean, you know, it, it, it really does to take initiative. Man, if you don't like the life you, you have, then take initiative to change it. Envision the life that you want and to prioritize all the things that you deal with from important to urgent. Yes, it's important that I do this, but this is urgent that I take care of this right now. To seek mutual benefits, to listen and understand others first, to collaborate, to create possibilities to practice self-renewal and, and, and hearing all of that and understanding all of that. In other words, you and I are to do exactly what the Bible instructs us to do. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And as I like to say, with every fiber of my being, and then we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. 
So my prayer is this, not that you are seeking these seven habits, not, not that you're not happy with the life you have so you change direction and go a different way, but, but my, my purpose in this is that you understand that God has a will for you. God has a calling for you. And God wants you to be exactly what he wants you to be in that calling. I say this all the time to our church that we just need to simply stop our stinking thinking. Well, Brother Joe, nobody likes me. Everybody puts me down. Everybody, but stop listening to everybody and start listening to the one. Well, you just don't understand. I go to work and nobody appreciates. Stop looking for the approval of man and look for the approval of one. That's what David was saying. This one thing. God, I just want to be with you. I want to dwell with you for all eternity. I want to understand your love, your goodness. I want to ask of you to impart your knowledge, your wisdom, and all of these things for to me so that I can pour out to other people. So my prayer is that this word finds you doing exactly what God has called you to do. And in the rare event that you are not doing exactly what God is calling you to do, my prayer for you is that you will stop doing whatever it is contrary to the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, and align yourself with the will of God and walk in the calling that God has called you to walk in. Keep the main thing the main thing. And that, my friend, is to have a personal, intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father made possible by the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus gave to you and I on the cross. And then once you say yes to Christ and have a relationship with God, you say yes to the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of you so that you can pour yourself out as an offering to this lost and dying world. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you.